Hello and welcome to Talking Baseball. Mike Miner is a royal. We will discuss it for the next hour and a half. Stay tuned. Get ready. Miner talk only. Hello and welcome to Talking Baseball. Today's episode, we will talk about Mike Miner, but I lied. It's not going to be only about Mike Miner. There's other topics on the agenda as well. My name is Jimmy. Sitting next to me is Jake. He's wearing a nice shirt. I had that outfit on yesterday, basically. We've yeah. swapped. Trev coming to us from California in a tie-dye hoodie. It's a cool hoodie, man. I couldn't wear that. I'm not cool enough. And uh, producer Bug Bug behind the dish eating, <laughs> eating uh, uh, a hat bug. All my words got messed up. It's kind Ooh. of like a stroke happened. Wearing an eat a bug hat. Yeah. Ad. Yes. Yes. Trev, how are you doing? I'm doing exceptionally well on this Tuesday morning. I, I really feel like it's too long in between episodes for us. I guess we didn't record on Thursday last week. It just felt like too long of a weekend. I, you know, it was a full week because we I rec- missed you guys. But we recorded the other interview on Tuesday, right? We went back to back. So yeah, it's yeah. been a long time. It's been a while. But I had a I had a great uh, Thanksgiving, a great weekend. I, you guys saw, I went to a farm yesterday. Uh, just really nice, nice weekend for me. How are you guys doing? How many farms did you go to, Jake? I think one, I don't know if it's technically a farm. It was like a historical place. Very nice. Took some family pictures there with Jess's family. And yes. the one yes. that her mother posted, I look horrendous. Yeah. I look like a big, like, oaf. Yeah. Like, it's not good. It's so weird. Jimmy called me laughing. My mom sent Just it to giggling. me. giggling. Uh, Saw a pic of you. You look like you're still in the clothes from like your family picture. You know, like you have to put on a nice shirt, and everyone kind of matches with their plaid in the fall. You look like you just kept. I'm in a trick here. here. I'm, I'm texting tr- the picture of Jake and Jess's family to the talking baseball group chat. So Zach is gonna get it and be like, "What are they talking and about in the, there?" If you're one of our Patreon members to join the talking baseball group chat, million bucks. Yeah, million bucks, and you're in, you're and in. then you get all the planning. The steal. Uh, also, if you're a Patreon, thank you to the newest ones. Mike, is laughing. Nicholas, Paulin, Cody Hatton, Archduke, and Diane Plouffe. Most recent patrons, Jimmy Ooh. is my name. Patreon.com slash John Media is the patron. No, it's going to be a nice moment. Trev, react to the picture of Jake and Jess's I family. Got it. I have not got it yet. Okay. I'm waiting. Uh, Trevor, you mentioned this on your intro a little bit. BBD is just giggling his face away. You know, you, okay, let me explain to the people the kind of person you look let like. Let me get my one statement out before we roast me for a little bit. It's so mean it's, what I'm about to do. It's going to be nice that first week of December because we got some holidays. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> we got some holidays coming up, you know, Christmas, Hanukkah, whatever, whatever you celebrate, that this December is going to be a little choppy. I think we're going to have a cool moment that first week of January where it's like, oh, we're starting game time. Like we're locked in. So I'm excited for that. Now let's rip me to shreds. No, here's the thing. I just want to paint a picture for the audience because the type of person in right now, the type of person you look like in that photo. I don't like me in that photo. That's not what you look like, Jake. Like it's not what you look like in your day to day, but the type of guy you look like in that photo is like um, the guy who played Richard Jewell in the Richard Jewell movie. His name is Paul Walter. I was going to go with... It's so mean. Like, it, I can't find like, you know a picture. know who I look like? Mean. The little kid from Christmas Vacation growing up. Just like up. a big bruiser kind That's of like... Great, yeah. You're like, you're like, you look at this picture of you and you're like, he dumb. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You know, my first reaction was... Like that kid's slow in the head. Oh, okay. <laughs> oh. <laughs> that's tough. That's tough. Yeah, but I, you don't look like this. This isn't you. Well, I don't like I that. I think it, it, uh, he looks exactly me. like that. It's a picture of that's him. It's a picture so. of me. Uh, my first reaction was Jess looks hot, like yes. a babe. 
Yes, smoke. Oh my goodness! And then this, my second reaction is, you look like you sell like John Deere tractors in Wisconsin. Like that's not me. That's it's not weird. You. Yeah, yeah. It is. It, that literally. But I'm is. the least masculine person ever. Like I shouldn't be giving off John Deere tractor salesman vibes. Yeah, but like. You sit behind the desk. You're BBD, there, you've like, been laughing out. a lot. Let's 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 hear it. Well, I don't know. <laughs> I was uh, a couple of weeks ago. I was showing my mom a picture, some pictures of you scrolling through your Instagram. Excuse I forget me? why. Oh my God. I forget what day it was. There's some <laughs> reason. Thanksgiving. Okay, that's interesting. It's probably a session where she wanted to look at Noodle. Yeah, she likes I seeing bet. those pics. But then she saw a pic of Jess and she didn't believe that that yeah. was your girlfriend. No. So Jess has like, know, Jess really. has a very pretty smile and a beautiful face. So people are shocked. Oh, I was telling her about you but different. Ah, and then okay. I was Good scrolling through up. that and you you but different did him. Like you caught while he, your he was mom in Arizona. on my Instagram. Is your mom a fan of you but different? Kind of. Well, she thought it was going to be kinder, so she asked me if you would do one for her and I said it's not going to be <laughs> flattering. Uh-huh. Like you here in the chat. This is a mean pod right now. So let's get into the baseball. Let's get into those miners you want to work talk at about. Enterprise Rent a Car in I'm, Fort Myers. They Florida. have a great and they just like dick you they around. They have a great like manager trainee dick on you. program. Yeah, they're yeah. Oh, you're the assistant. You're the assistant manager I'm failing at, at my job, but they don't want to fire me because they'd rather He's got rip else. on me. Yeah. yeah. Okay. You don't look like that. Thank you. Uh, you look very nice today. Tough. I think you look exactly like that. I just okay. don't know That's what the job. meanest That's thing as said. Mean as it gets. That's as mean as it mean gets. As it gets. <laughs> picture Perfect. of you still. <laughs> That's a good point by him. It's yeah. a picture of It you. is a picture of me. Doesn't look like you, though. Like, they're professional photos. I saw some of them, and I look fantastic. Yeah. The fact Jess's mom posted that. I mean, it was a shot across Dude, the Dude, there's one. If you come to my house, maybe I'll post it. Dude, there's, we have, my mom has a picture of every Christmas picture the family's ever right. taken. There's one year. Where I look like a box truck. Yeah. I look like. Oh, I remember the, that year. Yeah. I just look. You were mad. So mad. Yeah. Because I'm like, we sent this to everyone. Yeah. And clearly. Yeah, Jim, Jim my, been, uh, had a rough year this yeah. year. My huh? sisters just chose whatever they looked best in. And right. Luke and I are just standing there like, we don't know a photo is being taken. Yeah. We just look like box trucks. Yeah. Um, so I'm with you. It's bullshit when Thanks. you look at the truth. Thank you. Yeah, but uh, Lucas has that like handsome. He's got a little. No, like, this was middle school too, Luke, um, which wasn't. Yeah, no. middle school Luke was different. He wasn't handsome yet. He didn't. No. He didn't become a man yet. Yeah. Okay. All right. Mike Miner signs a multi-year deal to go back to Kansas City. It's two-year deal. They still haven't leaked the official numbers yet, which is so odd. Like, why? I don't know what we're hiding about Mike Miner. Um, but, I mean, the, it was supposed to be significant because, again, we kind of got caught into this, oh, Drew Smiley gets paid for a year. That's cool. The fact that Mike Miner got multiple years is kind of news. And the fact it was with the Royals, I think that surprised everybody. But, I don't know, kind of a fun story. But, yeah, we still, two days later, we don't have a number on it. Just, it's a two-year deal, no number. Do we uh, even know it's two? Mm-hmm. It says multi-year, right? It does say multi year. Two year deal with Mike Miner. Yeah, yeah. This says it's confirmed that's a two year deal. And then they also got Michael Taylor. Michael A. Taylor. Michael A. Taylor for 1.72 million. So, anyway, I mean, the Miner deal, if you're a Royals fan and you're listening, this is, this isn't a, it's a good move. I mean, Miner's 2019 was phenomenal. It's 2020. I think the, the peripherals say that. They're kind of the same as 2019. The velocity was down, but the effectiveness of the fastball was the same. And you're just banking that he can do that again. And if he needs to go to the bullpen, he can do that. But what the Royals business is, is not having to rush their prospects. They have so many prospects that are arms in their system, and they don't want to have to rush them up. So I wouldn't, you know, they tried Matt Harvey last year. They just need innings eaters so they don't have to rush the development of their big three down there. I forget their names. Uh, yeah, I wrote it down somewhere. Well, they've got uh, Singer and Bubich got called up this year. Yeah, and they're both young. They have Jackson, I'm not going to say this right, Kahar? Kowar? Kowar? Okay. It's K-O- K-O-W-A-R. Daniel Lynch and Asa Lacey. 
Right, their first round pick from this year. So, so they just don't want to rush those guys. So they're just buying innings, really. And Miner can be good. Maybe they flip him if he's really good. Maybe they don't. Know. Trev, you got some it's Mike Miner stuff? Is he move. in the book? I don't know if he's in the book. I spent a very brief amount of time with him in Texas spring training. Nice mm. dude. Um, he did pitch for the Royals in 2017, and then kind of parlayed that little experience into that three year pact with. Um, with Texas. And he actually signed that year that I signed with them the same year. And it was interesting because yeah, he went to the bullpen and then they signed him as a starter again. It was kind of like a weird thing, but he, yeah, he had that unbelievable year in 2019 and last year he got hit. He got hit hard Mm -hmm. last year. Trev, if you were his teammate, it's it's all about the spin now. He's got good spin. They're going to sign you. This is another example of that. Trev, if you were his third baseman and he was at 199 strikeouts and there was a foul ball, popped up to you and he screamed drop it drop it drop it would you drop it to give him the chance at 200 strikeouts sure okay so you had no problem with that no i mean it didn't affect the game and like i don't know if he had a bonus or whatever but i want everyone to get their bonuses so i don't have a problem with that either i'd expect him but it's a precedent set a nice bottle of wine he can't get mad at like bat flipping or he can't get mad at anything else which I'm fine He with. shouldn't. He shouldn't, but yeah. I'm saying, you know, play that game. But a lot of people were upset about that. Yeah, Trev, you mentioned the spin rate. I think his fastball was technically, like, the third best spin rate fastball or something, which, again, you don't expect that from Mike Miner, especially his velo has dropped. Um, I, I think his fastball sit at 90 this year, and I think a couple years ago it was 94. I think part of that he was doing a lot of bullpen stuff as well. But, uh Hey, good for him. I'm interested to see the numbers. That's one of those weird things. I don't want to say it's a great contract. If you're a Royals fan, like Jimmy said, I think you should be happy. Uh, you Dude, can't, you all can't he has have... going for him on the baseball savant <laughs> bars is, fa- like, look at this. Fastball spin, Fastball baby. spin, 97th percentile. Everything else is mediocre or bad. I, I think mainly it's exactly what you're talking about, Jim. He's got to eat innings. And then I think a lot of teams now, they'll take a look at some of these guys that with the with – the, um, the spin rate, like at the upper echelon, they'll take him in. They'll probably hook him up to some biomechanical uh, wearable mm. technology and say, let me see why you're doing this. Let's get a better idea of yeah. how you're doing it. Maybe we can implement something for the rest of our guys. Do you have a secret? How's your Pelican grip doing? Mm. Blah, blah, blah. I think it's just more of a mentorship, eat innings type of thing. And, look, and the Royals ca- are fine. We don't know the number, but the Royals are fine yeah. if he's not superb. Whereas, you know, uh, a team in the hunt, the Braves, the Blue Jays, they want guys that have a little more bank on a result. I, I don't know the phrasing, but whatever. Yeah, this is a classic pitcher at the end of his career type of deal. You'll see it. We're probably going to see a bunch of these. He, he comes oh, back to oh, Kansas. We're going to sign guys like this. Stuff like that. Coming back to Kansas City, too, I mean, that clearly means the organization likes him and has a good relationship with him, so they do want him to mentor those young guys, too, which is cool. And, yeah, I know, Jim, you said it in, I think, the fan baseball front office perspective is don't, you know, you can keep those young guys down and you don't have to push them. I know there were some Royals people saying, like, what? Like, Mine are going to be blocking some of our prospects? No. <laughs> They're not ready. You'll never have too much pitching. And if uh, you get yeah. good Mike Miner, it might be cool. And I'll tell you what, you know, I'm, I'm not going to start getting excited about the Royals, but they've got big pitching prospects Stop. on the way. Keller's, the Keller's, Keller's pretty good. I'm just saying, if they could find some 2019 Mike Miner I wonder, and the, yeah. the young guys pitch well, like the Royals will be the next, the next, next team. If, if that young pitching starts to develop. That's all I'm saying. Pitching takes a lot longer than hitting, though, so. Gets the people excited, though. I know. You're, get, you're, getting, the, you're getting the Kansas City people excited. I get it. I'm going to be the opposite. Just, just you, have, you have to have patience now. Yeah. Well, you have these pitchers for seven years. Uh, there's five we just named, the three that haven't broken out yet. Six, Singer, Bubich, and Keller. That's six guys there that are, I think, all under 24. Keller's good. Say three of them. Ke- Keller's panned out already. Say Keller plus two others pan out. Like That's a realistic thing. Then you get three guys. Uh, and then you get a window of like probably four years with those three guys. That's But it's not open yet, Trev. I mean, Jake's just saying yeah. it's uh, in sight. They're, they're on deck 
to get the fan base excited. <laughs> yeah, yeah, is what I'm saying. Yeah, fan base, there's great fans, excitement. If they put a good ball club out yeah. there, the fans show up. It's an awesome place to watch a game. You can tailgate. Mm. Love that shit. Michael You're A. Taylor is away from being two years away. There you go. That's that one. <laughs> Four years away sometimes. If you were to do math. Not a math, bud. Never been. Michael A. Taylor, he signs. He was with the Nats for his full seven years. And now he signs a $1.7 million deal. Um, the Royals love speed. Which is kind of funny. Like, the Royals just love fast players. Love Two years speed. ago, they fielded a sprinting team that accidentally held baseball bats every three times a game. And they now, did. They like, came to Yankee Stadium, and I was yeah. like, what is this? It's, it's, like, little, it's intimidating when you play them a little bit because you're like, do they know something we don't? Are yeah. they just going to run around the whole time? Um, it was just you know, nothing but speedsters. I was, I was actually looking at sprint speed this morning on Ooh. Baseball Savant. Who am I? I don't know. <laughs> Who have you guys turned me into? I have no idea. But then you got me thinking right there, like, is, is Michael Taylor uh, up here? And I don't see his name. Didn't What's you and that? the Nats fans get into a little Michael Taylor spat at uh, one so point? So the, there's a contingent of um, – no, this is real. He's 74th. Is real. He's 74th uh, in sprint speed in the MLB. So okay. 74th percentile or 74th? No, percent. 74th overall sprint uh, Well, that's pretty good then. Speed. He's in the top 100 players? That ain't bad. Yep, right, right, right below Mookie Math Betts. Yeah. He's fast. Yeah, yeah. Whit Merrifield's faster than him. Yeah, I know. Dude, they had Mondesi, Merrifield, Hamilton, Gore. Yeah. Like, they had a lot of, like, it was like five out of nine where, like, this guy can't hit, but he can run. They had a legit, like, four by 100 Olympic track team. <laughs> can, you, very can you guys give me the top five? Like, can you name a few of the top five, do you think? Fastest sprint speed. Hamilton. Tim Lo Castro. No. Well, yeah, Timmy Lowe is up there, probably. Yeah, Tim Lo Castro, yep. Hamilton's on the top five. That's a fall from grace. Is this if he ever is was this sprint speed it's, to first? It's like the fastest this, they've been tracked. This at? was yeah. This was the I don't know sprint speed, whatever the hell that means. Like doesn't Obviously Otani you know have mean. a sneaky one or something stupid? Who Otani? Like He's doesn't not he get This to, is twenty twenty though, so okay. maybe I can do more. Wow, Buxton's a good guess in the chat. I'll do uh, yeah, just twenty twenty. We got Tim Locastro, Roman Quinn, who I played with. Good boy. Yeah, I just crazy. watched every single bunt attempt he's ever tried. Yeah, saw that. yeah that was awesome. Nice nice video. Uh, Adam Engel okay. for the White Sox. Nice. Byron Buxton and rounding out the top five, Trey Turner. Love yeah. that. And those are the only people in the 30 feet per second category. Everyone else drops below Elite. after that. Elite. So, Michael A. Taylor. Michael A. Taylor. There's a contingence of Nationals fans, like Nats moms. If you're Nationals fans, back me up here because I got into a spat with this. It's probably like a Facebook group, like Nats moms. And they love Michael A. Taylor. And I did a breakdown on him because it was like the worst game yeah. a player could ever possibly have. I ended it with like his highlights and saying, hey, it was just one game. Yeah. But it was like he cost the game winning error, went 0 for 5 with 5 strikeouts. Yeah. And, uh, Nats moms got mad at me. And then I had some Nationals fans reach out like, yeah, man. There's like a Michael A. Taylor fan yeah. base that's a culty. Maybe it's the Andy Pettit thing. Like all these kind of Nats moms have crushes on Michael A. Taylor and they they felt offended. He was it. supposed to be the guy in Washington for a long time. You know, he's got tools, man. He was he was a big fun, prospect. Fun to watch. Uh, sets the market for free agent hitters so far. It's him at 175 and right below him is Josh Harrison at 1 million. So... The hitters market's still picking up. What what would you guess Your for minor? Two ten? Two fifteen? Two forty? Two four? Two six? Two twenty. You think so? Yeah, I think he yeah, I think he's out there. I think he's I think it's two sixteen to two twenty. Okay. I like two sixteen. Jake has 216 locked up. Trev, what's your official guess? I'll go 216-1. Okay. Is it I'll, go, I'll, go, I'll go a little higher. I think he's going to demand more than a Robbie Ray. So I'll go uh, – or maybe yeah. not. He might, oh. That might just be the collusion number that we have going on here is the eight. All right. Turns out it's it exists. Yeah. DVD has it. Awesome. Did it just happen? Uh, or are we dumb? 
I don't know. I just found it on Spot Track. Okay. I, I always say them. Spot Track. I don't know. I don't know how it's said. Uh, two for seven point two five. Huge. AAV or total? Total. Yeah. Okay. You guys were weird to me how that. high you were going. I don't believe that. We what believe fucking it. site is that? It's the like it. contract website. I'm not believing it. Does it stand for sports contracts? I assume so. I use that site all the time. I yeah. never had that realization. Because I always thought of it as spot track. Spot track. But sport You go to contract. the spot you're looking for. Spot track. Pretty sure it's sports. Yeah, yeah. It makes a lot of sense. <laughs> all um, right. So two for seven, five. That's three. I'm not believing that. You guys don't believe that? We're two non-believers? Believing. I do not believe that's the number. Okay. Two non-believers. I mean, they... They usually specify when they're estimating, and they don't have it listed as an estimate. I think three non-believers. I kind of believe it. Well, it's oh, a little. I wasn't low. talking my minor. Oh, God, Trav, you believe in God? Here we go. I do. Cool. Okay. Um, I don't know in the traditional sense that you know any one specific. Yeah, like a nice religion. sunset. That's when we need a good boring button. higher power. <laughs> weird, like you know, you really start thinking about the universe and like. There was something there. Who was there at the beginning? Something. Something's there. Go so back I'm, a long damn time. Okay. They created me. Ooh. They. That's multiple cuts. Could be. That's just your mom and your dad. Yeah. Oh, yeah. That, Banging. <laughs> Banging it out. <laughs> they back did, of, huh? Back oh, yeah. of a Pinto. Good sesh. Hot. They almost called him Pinto Ploof. <laughs> that was almost <laughs> That's gonna, a kind of like a name. Rivers Cuomo type thing. Uh, anyway. Philly's owner says they cannot sign JT Romuto because they lost $2 billion. Eh, strike that. Reverse it. That was Bill Madden? James Madden? I don't know the article writer name. Steve John Madden, Madden? John Madden? John Madden. Steve Madden. Steve Madden? Is that what it is? I think so. Uh, he just got the number wrong. This caused a storm on Twitter for a while. Like, how can the Phillies lose $2 billion in one year? That's the entire evaluation. It's like, well, it's clearly fake. <laughs> like, <laughs> skip that step. And just be like, that's fake. Uh, so it, it's fake. And then they retracted it, and they said that they lost $145 million, which is like uh, someone else I read just guesstimate. Basically, the whole article smells and stinks, and like everyone's like, well, the whole thing's probably fake now. But the Phillies probably aren't going to sign Real Muto. Everyone lost money. So I don't know. That was like a, a headline, caused a stir for a day, got retracted. I don't think anyone cares about it anymore. I didn't. I mean, the two billion number was bad, anyways, because it didn't make any sense. That's their value. That's their Forbes, like what the franchise yeah. is yeah, valued. Yeah, say like N- none of this made sense, anyways, because I I still don't even believe it. I mean, I just think they're trying to throw a dumb negotiating chip out in the ether. I don't think any of that article's real. Yeah. So I'll, I we're on the same and page. Trev, this is isn't this your best friend? Isn't this the owner? You hit the walk off. You guys started making out in the shower or something. We're definitely close. I saw the shirt. <laughs> 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 Uh, John, I you know yeah. look, John. I think you're right, uh, Jake. This is could be a negotiation tactic. The thing I keep thinking with the Phillies is one, they need a catcher. Two, Bryce Harper c- consistently has been calling for them to pay JT Real Muto. So you give a guy 13 years, a zillion dollars, you think he's got a little bit of juice there. Um, you know, I don't know if they're going to be able to compete with some other teams, maybe at the dollar figure. Maybe that's why they're trying to do this. Um, but how about you know, this? Uncle they need more Uncle, than JT Real Muto. Uncle Steve. So, Uncle Steve picks up Real Muto for the Mets, right? And part of the deal is a blockbuster Harper trade. And Philly's owner is like, he, would he wanted to play with Real Muto more than he wanted to play for Philadelphia. We're out of here. <laughs> and then Phillies fans just cry and cry. This is nothing cry. against Bryce Harper because I do think he's worth every penny that he got paid. Um, but this was signed before the COVID season. I bet if I bet if that scenario arose and they could somehow give Harper to the Mets, they would do it. That's just my gut feeling. But I mean, I like I said, I think Bryce is worth every damn penny. Yeah, I, uh, man, the Real Muto thing's gonna be f- fun. The more and more I think about it, I, I've seen more taster reels. He's not your normal catcher. He's a solid base runner, blah, blah, blah. And I think, uh, I think the right teams are in the mix, man. I, I think he's gonna get, get a the Yankees payday. going to this guy. They need a catcher. No, no. You guys hate Gary Sanchez. No, 
No. You know, like it's cute. Why not? Strong. If JT Real Muto ended up on the Yankees, we would be very excited about it. But, but it's not their need. The Yankees have a limited their, spend and not their biggest need. We're done this on two episodes in a row of talking Yanks. So if you're interested, you can go find if a deep dive there. DJ LeMay, who doesn't sign there? They have to get Lindor. There's rumors that that Mike Miner number might be out in a couple hours, and our guesses might be close to it. And the uh, reported Spotrack number is false. Eat a bug, Spotrack. Um, yeah, I yeah I, if, the, if the Yankees don't re-sign DJ, I said this on the last episode of Talking Yanks, I will become a very obnoxious Yankee fan and say, well, go trade for Lindor now. Go get the best package for Lindor. I don't think they're going to pay DJ, man. Like, I don't know. We'll see. I, it's still, you guys know more about it than I do, but just gut feeling is that he's probably going to command more money somewhere else. They want, they want a hometown discount. And I don't think. He's well, I think that. he has all the leverage. I think he's playing the game perfectly with how much he repeatedly keeps saying in the public, I will take a discount for play for the Yankees. I want to play for the Yankees because kind of holding the Yankees to the fire now where if they don't go and get him after all of that, it's on the Yankees for getting outbid. So I think that DJ and his camp are playing it really smart, and the Yankees have to what's pony up, or 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 they're gonna, or they have to have an ace in their sleeve and a big second move. But you know, a while ago, I thought if they don't get DJ, they might just go get uh, Andrelton Simmons for a one year deal Ooh, because like then the shortstop market is huge in twenty twenty one twenty two off season. But now. Mm-hmm. I'm getting more irrational, and if they don't get DJ, you know, go get Lindor, and then have plans to sign him long term. Jim, it's funny Ooh. you mentioned the shortstop market mm-hmm. because the next bullet point on our list here: the Cincinnati Red Stockings. Oh, uh, the Bengals. Reds, Trevor, you're Reds. Uh, they were always I. They were always eyeing you, that oppo juice. They just never got the, enough prospects to put the trade package together. They're looking for a shortstop. They're probably losing mm. Bauer. They're kind of at grips with that. So there's 18 mil you got to spend elsewhere. And shortstop's kind of that hole in that team. There's a lot of young guys, a lot of a lot of bodies at positions, even though they didn't really hit last year. Um and, man, this is a good year to be in the shortstop market. Lindor's on the trade market. Trevor Story potentially on the trade market. And I actually really like the free agent crop. It's Didi, Andrelton, Marcus Simeon, a year removed from being a top three MVP. Um, I I'd don't go know. get Didi or Simeon. Yeah? Unless Didi hated his time there. He doesn't want to go back. He wants to Simeon sp- fits in really well with him. Didi seems like the guy that always wants to try something new. Ooh, I like, like that. I don't know if since been there, no done offense, that. I don't think Cincinnati is like the new adventure he wants to try. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. <laughs> yeah. I I don't think he. Yeah, I don't think that lights his eyes up. Let me go. Simeon in a Reds uniform. I like I like Simeon in a Reds uniform. He's Simmons got, wears red, you know, already. They, I mean, yeah. their offense was, you know, they have potential there. I don't know really what happened this year. You could just blame it on a COVID season, asterisk everything this year. Um, sorry, Dodgers, but um, mm. I can see that, man. I, I kind of like that move for them. Yeah, I mean, they, you know, Suarez was kind of missing for half the year. His homers ended up there. You can heal. Can Suarez play short? No, he probably can't. He's no. he's got that he's got that thick boy ploof third base yeah. body going right now. Uh, Castellanos is always gonna hit. Uh, I kind of like the fit with Didi as the lefty. You can start splitting up some of those righties. Moose is still there. He didn't fully moose this year. That lineup does have the guys. Jesse Winker went nuts for a little bit. They have year, a lot so. of lefties, though. I uh, I don't know. I think if you're a fan of the Reds, you're probably saying you don't want Andrelton just because your team didn't hit this year. So if you're bringing in another shortstop, even if you expect those guys to perform. Uh, man, yeah, I, I like... All they have a lot of fit. they have five lefties, the Reds. Shogo. Mato. Winker. Winko. Musso. Tucko. Tucker Barnhart, your guy. Yeah, we don't even have Senzel in that lineup. So uh Simeon, that place can be a hitter's park, right, Trev? 
You tell oh me. My gosh, dude. Yeah. That whole, that whole division's a hitter's park. It's ridiculous. Uh, Simeon, like he's to me when I'm looking, I'm a value guy. Mm. Okay, that's how I. That's how when I GM my fantasy football teams, yeah. I'm a value guy. When nice I place. bet, I'm a value guy. Sim, uh, Simeon is on a discount after a tough 2020. But he has, you know, you look back one year and you see the potential that's there. So I think that that's like kind of a guy that I would key in on if I was them. Does he want to go there? He's going to have some options. Like I can see him in a Yankees uniform. He could crush that Ooh. right field porch. Simeon? Yeah. Let's, yeah. Pick him up. A lot of options. He if they don't get, if they don't get DJ... They don't get DJ. I believe the Yankees become big players in the shortstop market, and they slide Glaber back oh, to Trevor second Story base. And with the Yankees uniform, Ooh. he might hit seventy homers there. Yeah, I would. We'll have we'll have that tweeted out. Clip that, Kyle. Clip seventy that. homers for Trevor Story. Done. Done. Boom. Next up on our list of topics here is that the Marlins acquired Adam Simber. Mm. And they DFA'd Jose Urania. Can you do a Timber Simber remix for us? Just for those people missing the burns. It's going down. I'm yelling Simber. I actually went somewhere. I was going Goldfinger with it. Adam Simber. Mm. Throws from his shoes, though. Illegal. Yeah. Well, no. It's legal. But legal. We don't care about this, correct? Oh. <laughs> Are you going to the Marlins? Oh, hell no. <laughs> that was me and Jim. I care about it. Look, it's another Jeets move, okay? I yeah, think Jeets has kind of been hot in the streets this offseason. Well, who Make celebrates the most out of this move? Ronald Acuna Jr. Yeah. Yeah. Stops that, getting hit. A fucker's out of there. Yeah. <laughs> Dude, hits him every chance he can see him. Uh, I wanted to know if this was funny business because Urania got hit at the end of the season, which took him off the playoff roster. Is that an, I don't know. I'm very naive here. Is there uh, any injury funny business or is this happening to Urania anyway? His numbers have gone down. I mean, he had two years there, 2017, 2018, um, you know, 34 starts, 31 starts, a three, nine ERA where I think, I think if you're a Marlins fan, it's just the past couple of years have kind of been, Fall from grace sounds really heavy, but he hasn't been good, and I think he was starting to hit that time when you start having to pay players. So yeah. the, the led the league and hit by pitches two years in a row. Writing was on the wall. I think that's kind of the thing is you know, we're going to see a lot of this. Guys that are about to make some money aren't going to make any money or not as much as they thought they would. We're going to see him DFA'd. He'll, he'll get picked up and put somewhere. All right. The cool. Royals might sign. Team will give him a chance. How about that? All right, I'm going to play a little soundbite here. Did it. Now we're pivoting to just a whole new conversation. L. Major League Baseball announced the formation of MLB's Draft League. I think if we wanted to, we could spend a lot of time on this because naturally we all have like weird opinions on this. So we should maybe limit ourselves. I'll just let everyone know what's happening. MLB... Uh, announced that it has teamed with Prep Baseball Report to form the MLB Draft League, a new summer league that will allow the nation's top draft eligible players to compete in a 68-game season beginning next year. The league will be headed up by former MLB scout Carrick Jackson, who resigned from his post as the head coach. No one cares about that. Uh, Five teams, all of them former minor league affiliates, have been brought aboard as the founding five clubs in the league. We have names here. The Valley Scrappers, Spikes, Thunder, Trend Black Thunder. Bears, and Crosscutters. And talks with a six-team are in the works. You guys both said you didn't like this right away, and I was kind of trying to give them credit, and then I read what they're actually doing, and I don't think it makes sense either. Um, I thought they were trying to – Trev, I thought they were going to try and – you know how there's kids that don't get looks, scouts don't come to their schools – they have to go to showcases to get in front of scouts. I thought MLB was just saying, well, there's a lot of money being made on these showcases. Let's form our own showcase league. And we'll go to Trenton and put on a three-day tournament with five teams. And then we'll go to Cincinnati and we'll go to Chattanooga and we'll put on these, these tournaments that, you know, we'll call it the draft league, but it's really just roving in and out. A 68-game season, 
Jake, you said it. Why would a pitcher sign up for this? I, I wouldn't. I mean, I, it's kind of the opposite of spring training. You know, we spring training is for the pitchers to get built up. If I was a pitcher, there's no incentive to me. I would, I would just want to have my draft day, pump 96 in the gun, and say, see you in the third round. Like, the, the whole idea around this is to – the MLB has been looking for their draft combine. They think this is the solution, and it's not. We would rather have a combine. Put all these dudes in a room and pump it as hard as you can. Like, literally the 40-yard sprint, but pitchers chucking a ball. Like, uh, I don't know, man. Like, there there are going to be some cool stories from this. There's going to be the kid from, and this is why you initially liked it, the kid from the D3 school that goes in here, you know, they were gonna. he was going to be a 25th round pick. He goes, plays with the D1 boys, slaps it around a little bit. He goes from 25th. To seventh round, and he's a real prospect. Blah blah blah. If you're a real prospect, it, you wouldn't play in this. You're just gonna ruin your stock. So I, uh, I don't know. I, I, I don't know. I, I. It feels like a miss. I hope I'm wrong. MLB baseball. If you're listening, genuinely, I hope there's something I'm missing. But I don't get. It. I feel like I think this is baseball trying to like make money on a little league and. Uh, you know, helps teams scout better. If you're a top yeah, pick, if you're in the top five rounds, you're not, you're not playing going. in this. You're not no. touching it. And and they're they're promoing it like it's gonna be those guys. The stars of tomorrow. The stars of tomorrow. And- this it's is this is lazy from MLB is what it is. You know, it's it's hard to scout, okay? And you know how many scouts have been laid off in the last year. This is this is a, res- a result of that or this was the plan all along, whatever it is. Like typically how these guys do it is they travel. There's area scouts. They go to high school games. They go to college games. Uh, a team will put on a workout. Well, they'll, they'll invite 10 guys and they'll do bullpens, ground balls, all that stuff. But it's a lot of work and a lot of info. Then you have to kind of, you know, decide like, how can I project this guy? Where does he project? And they rely on these area scouts to do that. This is trying to get everyone together. They want to put them in front of the stat cast machines. They want to have guys wear shit. This is, you guys hit it on the head. This is not for the top prospects. Now, if you think you're underrated and you want to go out there and improve your draft stock, maybe you go to this. But again, as a pitcher, you want to put more innings on your arm. Um, You may, you know, it, it could go either way. I think this is just a lazy attempt for them to be able to identify talent. It's also really conf- it's really confusing because the s- schedule they have set up goes after the draft. So then they're thinking that that would help offset no A ball, no short season A ball, because a lot of when you get drafted, you go to short season A ball to play a couple games before the season ends for like August, July and August, September, or not even September. But but then but then that's drafted players, and this is supposed to be undrafted and. These kids aren't going to get paid because they're amateurs that haven't been drafted. You can't get drafted. So I don't understand the idea. Either there's something huge that's been misreported or we're missing. Um, so basically this idea is happening and it doesn't make sense to us. They, uh, they basically, the one interview I saw on MLB Network, um, the guy basically said exactly what you said, Trevor, which, again, there's no perks to anyone, but they were like, you know, there's a lot of times in baseball front offices where their East Coast guy fights for a shortstop and their West Coast guy fights for a shortstop, and they don't know who to pick, and it's kind of like, that's your guy's, that's your guy's problem. <laughs> F- figure that's that out. what scouts are for. There's a head scout, there's area scouts. Yeah, that's the whole process. That, the draft is tough. <laughs> the draft like, is you know? tough. And if you're a it's pitcher, be that way. and hey, let's say you are the sixth round pitcher who who wants to go and drop some D because you think you should be a first rounder, I'd go out there for one game, shove, and call it. And I I wonder is that going to be available to guys? Like, what are the rules around this? So I don't know. I hope I'm wrong, but it 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 feels like a miss. The wearable and the stat cast type stuff, I think, is what they're really trying to get from this. Because look, I played. In every damn minor league you could play in, uh, every level. And when I was my rookie year, the guy that was like MVP of the league was a guy named Mitch Enertson, and he crushed it. And everyone was like, "Holy shit, this guy is fucking Babe Ruth!" And he didn't make it past low A. So that you could have guys tear this league up. It doesn't. It's not. It doesn't mean you're going to all of a sudden be a big leaguer. You know, it takes time for people to develop and. 
you know, that's part of the process of becoming a major league baseball player. You can't, you literally cannot go from high school or even college very rarely to the big league. Some pitchers can do it, but you need to play some games, you know, against some really good competition. This, this would mean if I was a GM, this would mean nothing to me except if I got the stat cast numbers and there's a diamond in the rough. I can develop this guy. Your results in this league, I would be like, and cares? you can get those numbers from a combine. Exactly. This is a the when I saw this, I was like, "What is going on?" They're trying to like, they want to make the draft, the MLB draft, something that it's not. And how profitable could it be? Why are you doing this? Like, how much money could you make off the draft? Like, why are you putting so much effort into it? I, mean, I don't understand. There's always ways, but seems still, very misguided. To I me. mean, give me a combine where I'm getting who hit the hardest ball, who threw the hardest. Who had the best spin rate? Like, that's what's fun. I I do yeah. think they're looking at this as, like, a mini industry and easier for the scouts, which, again, kind of not thinking about the players or the fans, which checks the boxes. I, I think this is, this, is a, this is a massive mistake. Failure. Yeah. Most likely. Good. Um, enjoy. All right. <clears throat> the final <laughs> segment of today's show is a little game we're going to call... Tender or tough? <clears throat> Good. I like that. Thank you, guys. We have uh, December 2nd, which is tomorrow. By the end of the day, teams have to finalize all of their arbitration. What it <clears throat> yeah, basically the, you know, the players, players that are due for raises, the young guys within the organization. Um, that would begin pay bumps this year. So we mentioned the Yankees already a couple times. Gary Sanchez is in his first year of arb, second year of arbitration. So he he's he would be going from five million to say seven million this year. And if you're the team, you have the option to non tender them. So the example from last year, uh, I think, was Jonathan Villar. You know, he was good for the Orioles. He had a high WAR. He was going to make seven and a half million. Uh, and the, the Orioles said, no, we'd rather not pay him. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> so, you know, it's, it's become more of the financial equation of baseball where, you know, we'll, we're, we're about to say some of the names on the list, but it's, you know, I'm seeing Austin Hedges for the Indians. Do the Indians want to pay Austin Hedges $3 million to be their backup catcher, or would they rather pay someone the minimum from their minor leagues and save themselves $2.5 million? Yeah. So... Tender means they tender them. What's tough the other option again. Means tough. tough break. Tough. How do you like your steak cooked? Um, I'm a I'm a medium rare guy. I'll some if I'm at a nice place, I will go rare. I uh, steak, whiskeys, and IPAs are the you know my three manly areas. And John Deere tractors now. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yes. Okay. All right, here we go. I'm only going to read off the names that I I think are interesting. So Austin Hedges, we'll start there. Indians, $3 million is the projected. I'm going tough. The only reason I wouldn't go tough is because it's a bad look trade-wise. I might go tender just because he his good stats reflect perfectly to Roberto Perez, who they love. And they love and big they catchers. And they traded for him recently. That's, yeah, that's the only thing that's making me say so tender. I'll, I'll go tender. All right, I changed my mind. I'm tender. Trev? Three hot. million is the projected? It's yeah. hot, too. I'd say non-tender. That's tough. Tough. It's fair. Tough. tough. All right. Uh, Gary Sanchez, projected 5.5 5 million, which seems low down the projected to me, but I'm going to say tender. And again, we've had so many long conversations this on Talking Yanks. Um, they... they if you're going to lose Gary for nothing, you you might as well just keep him and see if you can tap into the the 30 home run a year catcher he he was in 2019. So, I don't think they're going to lose him for nothing. So, I'm going to say they tender Gary. Jake, I'm going tender. They're the Yankees and Gary are in bed together at this point. And they said it already. Boone basically Pretty said much. he's coming back and he's playing. So, yeah, that's kind of a easy if, one. If there was a bigger catcher pool of candidates out there, I think it would be time to move on. There's just not. So give it one more chance. If it's a disaster, okay, move move away. I agree. Tender. Tender. Too much potential. <clears throat> give away for $5 million. Let's go to first baseman. Danny. Well, what about the Rockies? Tony Walters, $2 million. I don't know anything about the Rockies. I just know that they're cheap as hell. 
Yeah. He's supposed to grade incredibly defensively. He's never hit. Uh, and Tender. Tough. He's gone? He's tough. Tender. Rockies are shaving money this year. Nolan's gone. Story's gone. It's only two mil, but Walters yeah. gone. Yeah, I mean, like both those guys, Hedges and, and Walters, like you could say tough because they don't want to pay him that much, but these guys are also valuable when it comes along, uh, around playoff time. Like people are looking for backup catchers, defensive catchers. Um, Negative 0.5 war this year from Tony. Yeah. Did you play every game last season, though? My, my theory is we're going to really see a lot of non tenders, a lot of toughs around the league. So I'll toughs. also say tough for him. Okay. Do they have any? And possibly uh, a sign back because that's always a possibility here. Yeah. Uh, I'm trying to see if they have anyone like coming up, catching prospects, but I don't care that much. Okay. All right. Uh, first baseman, Danny Santana, Rangers. He's projected to get $3.6 million. I'm going to say they tender him. He had a really good 2019, and they didn't trade him when they could have with the value being high. I think the Rangers are trying to win and be all in because they got the new stadium. They have players. Their lineup was terrible last year. But I'm going to say tender. Tender. At this at this money, they tender and look for a trade. I don't know. Are they competing, really? It's just he, he played 15 games last year in 2019. I mean, 857 yeah, no, he's, OPS. He's got all the tools that Played all need. over. Uh, I just think the Rangers are the worst organization in baseball, so uh, who knows? All right. <laughs> wow. wow. I'm going to skip Chris Bryant's on this list because he's owed so much money, $18 million, but they're not just going to not. They already said they're going to tender him. They have to, but I understand why they put him on this list. Talking point. Travis Shaw, Blue Jays, $4.5 million. What do you think, Jake? Ooh, that's an interesting one, huh? Because yeah. they've got infielders. They're reportedly in on other guys. They're in on a lot of other infielders. Shaw right? was, I think Shaw was good for them, and then he came down towards the end of the year, if I remember. I'll go non-tender. I think if they really want him, they probably think they could get him at a, at a lower price tag than that. And they've got options. Yeah, I think this it's a classic. He should be tendered, but they won't. Yeah. That's what I think is going to happen this year. I think in most years, they tender him a contract. Uh, this year, I know they're looking to um, dip into the free agent pool, uh, according to me, uh, as I reported on George Springer very early. Uh, so they're looking to shave some cash so they can spend. Who's going to play third for them if he gets tendered? Vlad lost 40 pounds. Are they going to move him mm. back? I don't think so. Um, I didn't think so either. But they're, they're in the market for guys. I think Cavan can play anywhere, and I think they're I was gonna going to say Biggio could scoot, scoot over there. They're, they're going to sign an infielder. They're rumored with Colin Wong. They were rumored with DJ. So, is, I mean, is Bo going to be too big? Can he play 3B? No. He good. Oh, Cavan yeah. started 32 games last season. Oh, no, 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 Drury started six. Panic started four. So you can move Kevin over, but yeah, I don't know. Uh, I'm going to guess they that's tough Feels for Shaw. Tough. Feels tough. Feels like they moved. They got him. He's never part of their plan. And they're like, yeah, we'll just start a new plan. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Of, I mean, yeah. eventually Bo is moving to third base. He's six, 185. He'll get to six, 210. That ploof diet. Bang in 3B over there, yeah. But left, yeah, left Kevin can move over. Left fielders is a super interesting crop. Eddie Rosario, Trev. This is a big one in Twins territory. I'm, Projected I'm 9.6 I'm, I'm thinking non-tender mm. um, from what I've heard, non-tender. I haven't heard anything specifically from the organization, just some of the sites and guys I follow on Twitter. I think a lot of them are saying non-tender. Uh He'll be one of those guys. I mean, this happened with me in Minnesota. I was projected around the same, got non-tendered, and then you know eventually signed with the A's. Somebody's gonna. He'll be in a major league uniform starting somewhere, uh, but I don't. I don't think he'll be back with the Twins. I think I'm gonna say tender. I I think they don't know what's going on with Nelson Cruz. Uh, that's that's the only thing where I step back. Like if the Twins and Nelson Cruz know that they're gonna link up and do it again. Um, 
then I think you could see Eddie go. But there's something to knowing what you're going to get, man. And, I mean, you know, it kind of sucks that his name's Eddie. But steady Eddie, man. I mean, he's he's around an 800 OPS every year. You you just know what you're going to get. Like, he's not an OPB, OBP guy. He's got good power. Like I, I, I think you, I think you bring him back. I, he's been a part of that organization for a long time. I mean, he played baseball yeah, at Trevor. Dude, Plouf. I remember him fucking forever. What's your first memory of Eddie Rosario? Minor league side, like just watching this guy hit, like cool batting stance, like always super quiet. I have a ton of Eddie Rosario stories. Um, probably not pod. Okay. Acceptable, but I love this guy. Uh, the only the the reason I think he won't be back is because of a guy uh, named Alex Kirilov. Yeah, I think he's ready, and I think they would like to have him out there. They have Jake Cave also, uh, and then obviously uh, Z German, and mm. my favorite Byron Buxton. So I mean, like their outfield has been one of the funnest outfields to watch in all of baseball, and Eddie's been a big part of that because he throws the shit out of the ball out there in outfield in the outfield too. But I think Kirilov is ready. <clears throat> Just tough, man. I mean, you move on from Nelson Cruz and Eddie Rosario. That's like giving away 70 home runs. <laughs> that's a lot of games. I don't think you're moving on from Nelson Cruz. Yeah, you know, that, that's the part I'd, I have no idea. Yeah. I mean, he very easily could be back. I think he's pretty comfortable there and likes it. We also, in left field, have Tommy Fan for the Padres. Now, they traded for him. Um, I think they like him. $8 million projected. He did get stabbed. Mm. And he's suing the strip club over it. Have I been there? <laughs> Getting stabbed at yes. that strip club or just at that strip club? I have been there before, yeah. Did it feel stabby? That's party, people. I'm not that kind of guy, honestly, but I've been there. Mm. I mean, they're going to tender him, right? Seems like it. Just to let him go. I mean, they got Cronenworth in that trade, so it's almost still a win for them. But he had a rough 2020. I could see, I could see, I'll, I'll, I'm flip a coin on it, so I'll go tough. Like I could just see them, you know, Tommy had that weird off the field thing. Keep it, I could see it too, because again, these guys want to spend money. And these are the kind of guys that we're talking about this offseason that are going to get non tendered. Guys that normally wouldn't get, and he's, he could be, he could be in that. If he's a clubhouse, I wonder how much of it hits the the clubhouse. Because they're trying to build like a win at all costs. We're in it. The owner said if we're not a contender, like you're all going to be fired and shit like that. So you wonder that. If they also explain it, we need to have this money to go get Trevor Bauer. Yeah. Uh, They also like just committed money to Clev, who's going to miss the year. Yeah. I don't know how much that factors in. They're spending. So I don't know. I'm going to say that uh, that's tender. And Kyle Schwarber, also in this left field pool in the Cubs. I mean, all the rumors looking to save money, looking to move on. $7.9 million for him is the projected. It'd be kind of big news if, if he gets, just because he's been such a name, part of that run with the Cubs, uh, where he just played in the World Series, and that's all <clears throat> it's hilarious. But <clears throat> is the DH staying in the National League? Yeah, that's a big thing. I can never get a read on Kyle Schwarber's like career. Like I, in my head, he's a banger and a scary guy, and his numbers are pretty damn good. You know, where does he fit in the field? Obviously, that's the thing in the National League. Um, like I, this is another one of those ones that's right on the fence. And he, in, in a normal year, would he be tendered? But he could be non-tendered, especially if they're trying to cut payroll. Uh, non-tendered and traded. That's always a. Um, It'd be the first like part watching. of that core to go, right? That young core. He feels like the name on this list that it happens, and if you're a baseball fan on the outside, you're like, what? But I, it kind of feels that way, but I'm also going to fade myself and go non because he, he hit 38 bombs in 2019. Like That's where this weird 59-game season, yes, Schwarbo wasn't great, but normally he'd have four more months to clean it up. So I, I'm gonna say no because even if his tender number is eight million, or we're you know we're at a sheet guessing, like there's has to be at least an AL team that would give you a flyer prospect for Kyle Schwarber. I mean he's got potentially you know, forty in the team? bat. Mystery, mystery team, mystery team, non-tender trade, Minnesota Twins. My other team, 
Tampa Bay Rays. Platoon him, DH him. That would be a nightmare you know? for us, yes. Yeah. Boom. You know, put him, hit him against righties <laughs> where like. he's got an 859 OPS career. Gross. DH him. He's a perfect guy for an organization like that. We liked so. Renfro on the Rays. We yes. don't like yeah, Schwarbo. This is a little different. You know, this could be, you know, I don't know how he hits against Garrett Cole. We could look that up. Hi, DBD. Thank you. He's on it. Uh, it doesn't get there. It gets pretty boring after that. Center fielders, you got Almora, DeShields, Goodwin, Heredia. Um, don't care either way. Sorry. I, I'm not trying to be mean, but. No. Right fielders, Ben Gamble for the Brewers. Guy. Jace Peterson for the Brewers. Huge. Chase Peterson, 700K. I don't know. Kyle Schwarber, two for 14 with two walks against Cole. Five strikeouts. He's out. Tampa's out. Tampa <laughs> is out on Kyle Schwarber. No, but I really could see him going there. The Schwarber thing's getting me frustrated because, again, you know, we'll see. I, I think the Cubs do tender him, but this is where I'll never get. If you're a team like the Orioles, and sure, I don't know all the financials and everything that's going on. But if you could get a shot at this guy in a hitter's ballpark and get Schwarbo right again, flip him for three prospects. Like, I, I just don't get why more teams don't take a chance like that. I mean, Schwarber? Well, they have Jose Martinez, yeah. the Cubs, also on this list. What if they did Schwarber and Tindu. take on Jose Martinez two mil? There you go. That's business. That's how the numbers work. What do you trade in there? Some home runs for base hits? Yeah. That's tough. Yeah, that would be. I really, really want to see Kyle Schwarber in there. Uh, their numbers are fairly similar OPS and OPS plus. <clears throat> I mean, obviously, Schwarber out homers him, but Martinez has he a 115 hits. OPS plus and. Schwarber has a 113. Trev, did you did you have a good idea that you were going to get non-tendered? Like, had you and the, had the twins and your agent been in discussions, or did you know it was a coin flip, or how how'd that happen? I think I kind of knew it was going to happen. Um, I thought they should have traded me the year before. Uh, they made they moved Miguel Sano to right field so I could play third <laughs> base, which you know, like anybody was like anybody that saw that was like, what's going on here? Yeah. Like, Miguel's an athlete. We know he's an athlete, but put him in right field. That doesn't make any sense. So, they had Joe at first, and they needed Miguel at third. I thought I was going to get traded uh, the year before. And then new regime came in. You know, uh, I think the writing was on the wall. I, I was hurt most of 2016. Um, but I got the call early, which was nice. They let me have a full offseason to shot myself around. Nice. Weird day, though, man. Very sad day. Yeah. Very sad day, yeah. It ended a 11, 12 years, 13 years in the organization. Who broke the news? Uh, I think I did. No, no, no. Who broke the news to you? Yeah, unless oh, you non-tendered like, oh, yourself. Oh, the GM, I don't know. It was either, this is actually kind of funny. I was on my way back home from a workout. I get a call from a 612 number, not saved. That's Minneapolis. Don't pick it up. And then I listen to the voicemail, and it's fucking... It's either Falvey or... Well, who's the other guy there? Joe Mauer? I can't remember. The other... There's like two of them. I'm, I feel bad. I don't remember his name. I know his name, but I forget it. Um, and so he basically says, hey, give me a call back. And I already know what's going to happen. So I call him back. We... All right, excuse me. Excuse me. That's, that's the whole fucking part of the story. I just ruined the whole story. Calls me and lets me know on the message that I've been non-tendered. And then says, call me back if you need to, like, have any questions about it. <laughs> and so I never called him back. I mean, what It's a great tactic. I, I mean, yeah. just always call from a number you know the person doesn't know, so they won't answer and leave it as a yeah. voicemail. <clears throat> Smart so I, move. I uh, went home, told my wife, and then that was it, man. Damn. Mm. Damn. All right. Well, tough for you. What's the result it is there? Tough. I've tough. been non tendered to a shit ton now. It's never fun. Vogelback, Brewers, they got a lot, guys. Brewers are going to non tender or tough everyone there. It's all guys they just kind of picked up. Uh, pitchers, I'm kind of losing interest in this game. A little bit. Mats, $5 million for the Mets. 
Maybe, Maybe see that. that could see that being tough. He was pretty bad this year. John Gray, 5.9 for the Rockies. He's been good. Yeah. I think those guys both get tendered. Pitchers, pitchers are in a unique position where it's like you just want to hoard pitchers. Are there Vince any Velasquez, really expensive? Are there any really expenses? Matt Barnes for the Red Sox, 4.1. It's an interesting one. I could see that being tough. He's the reliever that stuck out. Brazier, $1 million. That's an interesting one. A lot of Red Sox and Yankees names on here, so we'll probably get lost in that. Simber, Simber for the Indians had eight hundred k, but the Indians bounced him because they're trying to save a lot of money. It's kind of scary to look at, man. Let's go. Um, just I'm just going to control F Indians, and I can tell you who's being tendered <laughs> or who's being toughed because the Indians aren't keeping anyone. So Hedges is gone. Um, Delino DeShields is um, gone. Tyler Nake, but that's the whole trade. That's their whole last two yeah. trades is all those people. You know, the Bauer and the Clev trade is is literally Hedges, DeShields, Naquin. They uh, they have people coming up, but, you know, it's a weird look. Like, those trades kind of get finalized, sort of, if they <laughs> non-tender all those guys. But they wouldn't even pay Brad Hand 10 mil for one year or Simber 800K. Not that Simber's fantastic, but... That's going to trade the best shortstop in baseball. So, yeah, they're really doing it. <clears throat> Baseball's <throat> weird, man. I mean, they've got they've got Scott Alexander, the reliever for the Dodgers, career three one eight ERA, two nine two last year, a potential non tender at one mil. Baseball's got to figure out in this upcoming labor negotiation that shouldn't be a conversation. A lot of the one mil guys are not going to get non tender. There's a lot of guys on here that it's not going to be that those guys. Tell like, that to Simber, dude. Deep enough where they're going to get. What's that? Simber's about to kick your ass. He's a stud on the Marlins now. Oh yeah, I love him on the Marlins. Yeah, Jeets. Yeah, Jeets. Jeets, man, doing it. That's it. That's the whole episode. We did everything we wanted to do. We finished it. Thank you. Subscribe, like, leave a comment. Blah. Eat a bug. To bugs. See, uh, yeah, that's it. You see BBD's hat today, Trev? I did see it. It's a nice hat. It says eat a bug. Like that. It's from the store, merch store. Go get some merch. Ad. Merch. Do you have something to say? How'd you, you guys not know what grains are? Oh, well, we I go. know that there's grains in wood, Trev, but. Like the phrasing is very. I might have fucked up. I, I'm not a good. It also promoter, very dude. much seemed like good. you were giving away. It the It very bats. much seemed like you were giving away the bats. I'm not. I'm not giving those <laughs> bats away. Okay. I said th- I went three winners, bro. I like went above and beyond. It's badass, I was, dude. You know, I didn't even get. I didn't even get approval for that. I just said fuck it. I'm doing three. There was just like, there was probably five just slight misses throughout the tweet. That made it disastrous. Can you tell me? Or are you just so talking shit a, right now? Looked like an ad for the bats. Looked like you were giving away bats on one of the biggest. Well, I showed the bats on one of the biggest promotional days of the year. It looked like you were giving away Hall of Fame baseball bats. Which, that would have been sick. Which would have been dope. Because it just says, "Okay, here's my John Boy Media giveaway tweet." But the first. Our giveaway g- tweet. I know, but you just that's a weird, some people that's, don't read. That's two. Um, two Hall of Fame bats is the next thing. So it seems like the yeah. giveaway is the bats because it's just there. Two sets of grains. <laughs> I don't know. I mean, Maybe that's baseball the talking. Tweet. Yeah. Guess, Guess the, the number, number of combined, combined grains. And I, Lincoln item dude, and the other the bat. Your answers will win their item. The other bat. If you showed the other bat that you did on like what a grain is. It was much more obvious, like, oh, I get it. We're counting those lines. But these ones, like, where where would he count the grain? And I, I, well, I didn't not- want to show the grains, Jim. That's the whole point. And the, the, the other, the other I'm thing. I'm them guess how many there are. How many grains do you yeah. think are in this bat? I can't see any. It's, is it a maple bat? No idea. Because if it's maple, it's not going to have grains. Definitely like tree. Um and I, I think the other thing, Trev, which I, I guess can be a reflection of our stuff, is how many people actually get into serious wood bat baseball? Like, grains on a bat don't become a thing for a lot of hitters. And, hey, that is very show of you, but it's also not show for 98% of your followers. I never played with the wood bat, Trev. Wasn't good enough to ever be like, right. I'm going to play in a wood bat league. Yeah. I mean, it's on me. I haven't educated the people enough. Yeah. 
Do a sequence Funny. episode on grain. Someone grains. said, when are you going to do your sequence episode on bats? Grains. Type of bats people use. I would love to do it. I have a shit ton of bats. Grains are important, but the only thing is, Jim, is the ash bat is the one with grains, and people are moving away from ash. It's all maple now. Mm. And maple doesn't have grains, per se. Like, or they don't aren't like an ash bat. So I guess Who, I'm, I, maybe I am in deep into bat. Who's, who's uh, got the grainiest bat in MLB? Hitting Twitter. Grainiest bat in MLB. Who is it? You don't really know. You don't want to have all the grains because then people are, will say you're not show. Like show is when you have seven to like ten grains and they're all very straight. Mm. There's always talk about Chipper Jones. If it had more than seven grains, he would throw it away. Like or he wouldn't use that bat. Wow. When I would get a dozen bats, I'd get mm, four to five of them would be like pearls like seven to ten grains and you would just like lock those up those are your guys and then the ones with like a bunch of look like a book was it partially you doing that to feel more show like i'm sure a couple of those other bats were okay oh i used them still okay okay but like if you if you one day were like I need a little something. You know yeah, when the bat guy going. comes to the store, the bat guy comes to the clubhouse and he lays out all the bats, you know, in spring training, we saw them doing that at twin spring training. Let's make a video from that bat guy with you and just call it bat talk. It'll be one episode we do next spring training. Trevor Plouffe shows his bat. Yeah. I would love it. There's, I have so many questions about bats. and His ends where he, yours bends. You know... This is a weird thing, and I'll make this short because we've probably been going on for two hours talking about God knows what. Oh, people have logged out. They're gone. So that's how let me log out of this podcast. Yeah, baseball is so weird because you pick your instruments. Like your everyone's Mm. glove is different, everyone's bat is different. It's very interesting to me that that happens and why does it happen. So maybe we will go into it a little bit. We'll deep dive into bat Twitter and see how that works. All right. Okay. Show. I like that. Just got tagged in some stupid. Sorry, I'm not a master promoter. I will. Uh, Trev, it, it became the best promotion, the most talked about promotion. Thank you. I did a video about it. Yeah. It was phenomenal. That's the show. Thank you guys very much. See you later. We'll see you on today's Tuesday, Thursday. Tuesdays and Thursdays are the episode. If you're a Patreon member, you can watch live at noon. If not, it goes up on YouTube and all the apps. ASAP, leave a review. We appreciate those. Goodbye.